Joshua Rosen has come up to Hyba to keep an appointment with the head of the Port Authority. Although he has no business at the dock, he can't help stopping here. Because to Joshua, this dock is Israel. No passengers disembarking now. No tears of joy, no long delayed reunions. The ships on the bay are empty and silent. But he sees other ships, the ghosts of vessels that came before, bearing their cargo of precious lives that have found the heart to live again, coming with nothing but a lump in their throats and hope in their hearts. For to reach the dock is only the beginning. There's a crowd waiting to welcome the passengers. And isn't that Leon Berkowitz, the architect over there? Leon Berkowitz, good to see you. What are you doing here? Don't tell me the big day has come. At last. Your wife? Ah, after eight years. David, Sarah! It is just typical. The ship is due in at 7.15. Here it is almost 7.30 and it is nowhere in sight. David, Sarah! Come here this instant. Behave like civilized children. I know countries where machines run on schedule, but other things run wrong. And people have to run away. Who is coming for you? My parents. They are very old. How long have you been waiting for them? Nine years. Well, will another half an hour or so make such a difference? I cannot understand it. Where I come from, a man in uniform was something you hated. The children give you their hands, they are not afraid of you. I can't get used to it. I expect... brutality. Brutality. Daniel Aroni saw enough of that as a child in Yemen to last him a lifetime. To be a Jew in Yemen was to be lower than a donkey. You could not be a farmer, that was forbidden. You could do the dirty work, of course. Or you could be an artisan, until Jewish artisans were forced to train other workers to replace them. But Jews could read and write, as many others could not. Even though Daniel learned to read Hebrew upside down, because that was his appointed place when the boys gathered around the Bible. When they heard about the great bird that was flying over the desert with their brethren, the Jews of Yemen were not too surprised. For was it not written in Isaiah that they would go to the land of their fathers on the wings of eagles? So they walked and walked across the hot sands to Aden. Thousands of them. Forty-five thousand in two years nearly all the Jews of Yemen. And indeed, they did fly on the great bird to the promised land. All during the trip, Daniel thought of the man who was flying the bird and made up his mind when he grew up, he would be such a man and would fly such a bird, not lower than a donkey, but higher than the clouds. His father was disappointed at first. Was this the promised land? Who were these pagans who spent their time in cinemas and at cafes instead of at prayers? Daniel's father got his deepest wish. The thing that had been forbidden to him was to be a farmer. But Daniel's father couldn't get used to unfamiliar ways. Going to school, Shouldn't a son be apprenticed to his father and take his place at the plow when the time comes? Knives and forks instead of the hands the good Lord gave you. Mattresses, blankets, pillows, barbaric nonsense. 
needles, pills, and penicillin, one by one his father gave in, except You will not be a flyer. You will give up this school, this studying, this blasphemy. You will walk at my side and do my bidding, as a good son must. So he had to work harder, harder than the others. He had to catch up fast. And when you're working that way, the years go by like minutes. And so he got his wings. He had learned to tame those birds, to make them do his bidding. Yes, he, Daniel Aroni, who had come from a land where his people were lower than animals. He had bridged the centuries. Your parents must be proud of you. One of the first from Yemen to make it as a pilot in the Israel Air Force. And now a hero besides. Yes, his father finally was proud of him. It happened this way. A pregnant woman, en route to the hospital, was lost in the desert with her driver. Daniel volunteered to take up a helicopter and scout the area. He searched and found her. Daniel was able to get her to the hospital in time. Why are you smiling at me? Have I finally done something to meet your approval? To fly a machine is only a trick, and many learn it. But what you have done this time, my son, was an act of love, an act of peace. And who was Daniel waiting for at the dark? He was waiting for me. Funny how we fell in love. He had gone to a cafe in Tel Aviv, and I was the floor show. I found him waiting for me every night after the show. Every day for two months, he asked me to be his wife. And then, when it happened, we almost lost each other. Hello? A dance rehearsal? Next Monday? But... All right. I'll be there. Daniel was outraged. You are not going, he told me. I told him I had to. And he grew angrier than ever. You are married now. A wife doesn't dance in a cafe, he said. She stays home and takes care of her husband and bears his children. To be a wife, he said, is a serious business. I couldn't believe he meant what he said. And when I saw he did, I told him I was living. I didn't know that so simple a thing as a wedding could make a young man 2,000 years old. You look just like your father at this moment, then. Did you like it when your father forbid you to study and try to stop you from becoming a pilot? It is not different, Daniel. Not here in this country, where women walk alongside their men and are equals. To dance is my life, Daniel. And now, Elena is due back from a tour of France with the Inbal dance troupe. But she's coming back to Dan. He feels proud and lucky. And yet, it hasn't all been luck. It has been people very far away. I don't know their names. I have never seen them. I don't know why they cared what happened to us in Yemen, but they did. And that is why we are here.
They've been waiting in the hot sun and still no sign of the ship. The harbor master announces that there's been a storm at sea. The ship might be delayed for hours. So Joshua suggests that they wait inside. Thank you. Well, Leon, how is the idea of this? You ought to know. You taught him his lesson. But Leon is wrong. He learned his own lesson. Joshua only helped. When Daniel came to Israel, when the Yemenites came, they had much to learn. But when Leon came from Europe nine years ago, he had much to unlearn. He came here alone and thought he knew so much. He was an architect. He had studied under the best. His ideals soared to the heavens like a skyscraper in sunlight. So when he came here, he looked down on what he saw. Was this the promised land? These houses like cardboard containers thumbtacked to the earth? Where was the beauty, the mystery, the romance of the fabled country? Leon saw the houses put down fast. Learned about the immigrants rushed there from the ship, given some dishes and blankets, a plow and a spade, and told, go to work, Israel is your home. And he wondered, can a people be grafted to a land? They were immigrants. Leon thought of himself as a kind of tourist. He found a job in the housing department at the Ministry of Labor, but he could not stand it. One day he threw down his pencil. What's the matter with you, Leon? I'm an architect, not a machine. You can't expect me to sit here drawing these little boxes day after day without space, without desire, without inspiration. You're doing an important, practical job that needs to be done. You're being useful. Don't say that word to me. I would be more useful as a bricklayer than here at this drawing board, lending my energies to these stupidities. You must be patient. But he did not learn patience. He walked out on his job. He did, in fact, become a bricklayer. This way, he felt he could be more useful. He helped to build new settlements. One night, he wrote to a newspaper in Jerusalem denouncing Israel's architecture. The letter was printed. I sent for you, Mr. Berkowitz, because I read your letter in the Jerusalem paper. And you want an apology, I suppose? No, that's not my department. It's nobody's department, really, in a democracy. If a man honestly writes or says what he thinks, it is rarely necessary for him to apologize to anyone. No, I sent for you for quite another reason. I want you to meet some people. Will you come with me? Then Joshua Rosen gave Leon his first sight of a Mabara, an immigrant shanty town, where families had to live and still live because there just isn't the money to build anything better. Joshua never said a word that afternoon. He didn't try to drive it into Leon's head that compared with these huts and shacks, white boxes thumbtacked to the land are beautiful. He didn't try to change his mind. He just let it happen. And then, without a word, Joshua took him back to the housing department. I'm going to offer you a job, Leon. I think, after what you have seen today, that you're going to accept it. I have a job. I'm a bricklayer. But then Joshua described the new job to Leon. A new settlement in a new development area. It had to be finished in six months. He challenged Leon, dared him to use his talents in the way that his education and training demanded, saying that the country could not afford the luxury of using him as a bricklayer. So Leon took the job, and this is what he's been working on ever since, building 
other, newer, even better settlements in area after area. As new immigrants come pouring in, hungry for housing. But right now, Leon was not thinking of architecture. All he could think of was the ship and the one who was coming. You know, I haven't been able to look at the chat in this country without getting a funny, panicky feeling, as though I had lost something. You'll feel better. You'll feel better when your wife gets here. I can't wait to see her come down that gangplank. When I got her letter, might I show it to you? Her letter. After all this time, after nine years of waiting, I cannot believe that I will see you so soon. I will count the hours, my darling. I'm so worried after so long. Will I look older to you? Too old? Is it too late to have a marriage after so long a separation? There's so much I could tell you. Some things I mustn't write down. But on June... Well, darling. No sign of the ship yet. Soon. Be patient. And what about him, you might be wondering? Who is he to tell others to be patient? Joshua Rosen was one of the displaced persons thrown up by the wake of World War II. Statelessness. Homelessness. Absolute poverty, but not yet despair. Six million Jews died under Hitler, they thought to themselves. But we are going to Israel. What a welcome we'll get. The night the immigrant ship entered Haifa Bay, Joshua had a dream. He dreamed the ship had already arrived. A red carpet was rolled out at his feet. Pretty girls were there to welcome him to Israel. by limousine to the Prime Minister's office, where the entire cabinet was assembled, waiting anxiously to ask his advice on the handling of certain affairs of state. And then, Joshua woke up. And this is how he was greeted. It took time. It took patience. But when he had learned a little, he got the chance to teach. And teach he did, but not children, grown-ups. But he found that to teach the new ways to immigrants, it was not enough to lecture in a classroom. He had to go out to the fields, to the settlements, to the roads, and train workers on the scene. And what he learned. Joshua watched men who had never sawed a piece of wood turn into carpenters, mystics turn into welders, Intellectuals and artists do the back-breaking work of clearing rocks from the land. When I first came down here, I didn't see how I would be able to stand it. I thought my back would never stop aching. And after each day's work, I would look, we would all look, and there would seem to be as many rocks and stones as when we started. And then, you know, one day, I looked out over there. There were no more stones. That hill was cleared and ready for planting. And I felt such a sense of accomplishment. I felt like, like Michelangelo. You know, the way he must have felt when he finished his frescoes and he climbed down from the scaffold the last time. But it wasn't always so inspiring. Complaints, complaints. Wherever Joshua went, he listened to complaints. The tools are no good. The tractor broke down. There's no water. My wife is sick and has to wait another three days before she can get a bed in a hospital. And Joshua asked himself, what are we building here? A nation of complainers, grumblers? Is nobody ever satisfied with his lot? But then he realized that this is how a country grows. I can't get any water out of the stuff in my place. What a country. There is nothing wrong with this country. Oh, stop complaining. 
the latest newcomer had thrown them on their pride. Now they were boasting. This is the best country in the whole wide world. Yes, Leon. Today I'm an expert. I teach scientific methods to bosses instead of to wellers. You've given up teaching? Oh, no. I haven't given up learning or teaching. Well, I'm sorry I can't stay and meet your wife, Leon. I must go. It's late. It's a ship. It's here. Let's go outside. are old and slow. Took long time to process them through. Look, the meeting of the generations. What is it, Leon? She didn't come? Only this note, delivered by a friend who was on board. Told me this morning to be patient. And I'm glad you did. My patience was rewarded. Now I can only say it back to you. Be patient. A little longer. Wait one more gray hair or two until she gets here. Everybody who needs to come will someday be safely here. And meanwhile, don't stop, Leon. Don't stop working. Because don't you see? You are helping every day to make this country more wonderful, more beautiful for the time when she comes. Because to reach the dark, Leon, to reach the dark, is only the beginning. Yes, to reach the dock is only the beginning. You have helped make that beginning possible for nearly a million immigrants who have reached Israel since 1948. You have seen in this picture something of what your generosity through the United Jewish Appeal has been able to accomplish in more than 20 years of life-saving effort in Israel, in overseas areas, and in our own country. More than half of the million newcomers who have made it to Israel are decently housed, educated, and employed today. The rest still need your help, help of all kinds, and more still wait their turn to reach the dock. What you did yesterday gave life to millions. What you do today will build more lives tomorrow. So let's go on now and finish this life-saving work. <laughs> 